What is gonna guys, Jack here and welcome back to another episode of the Portsmouth Career Mode series. This is episode number 67 guys and we're gonna start today's episode off with a little bit of bad news really. We see there that Matt Wilczynski, he did actually pick up an injury in the last game of last episode and he will actually be out for three weeks as a result of that, which is a little bit of a shame because he's actually been in pretty good form when I have put him into the first team and I've been very impressed with the way that he has played. When he has got a little chance in the team, he's actually played very well in the Premier League. But before we get into anything, guys, I just want to thank you guys for all the support that you did give on the last episode. We managed to get well over 50 likes. And if we can do the same on this video, guys, that would be greatly appreciated as we go into the first game of today's episode here. And it is going to be against Manchester City, who really, apart from a couple of youth players that they've got in there that I don't believe are real players, such as Kaita and Facey there at the back, I don't actually think they've actually made any transfers whatsoever. I believe they have Benzema actually up front with Negredo. But apart from that, it's a pretty much unchanged side from the original squad and it's Willy Caballero there who was actually playing for Joe Hart in this match who was actually on the bench and you can see why there what a save it is with his head a really really good save actually because it did take a slight deflection on the way through and then Manchester City would get a chance there no idea why Tom Heaton actually dove for that one because it would have gone out either way it wasn't even going to be on target that shot from Negredo and I don't know why he actually dived for it because that wouldn't have actually made any difference and another good chance there for Negredo again having a shot on goal and this time he, he can't even put it on target which is a little bit of a shame for Manchester City. They'd get another chance as well. This time it'd be Karim Benzema playing through David Silva. I really did get fooled in this goal and you'll see exactly why there. What a goal that is though by James Milner with a header and I just couldn't believe when that goal went in. Really didn't expect it from David Silva. He just tracked back very, very well. And I was just expecting a cross to come in. And it did come in. And unfortunately for me, they do end up scoring off of it. But I do have to say, it was quite a one-sided match. And maybe deservedly so. Because they created so many chances in that match. And another chance there came to them. But again, Tom Heaton was the saviour. Making the save there. And denying them a chance to double their lead here. I was just hoping that I could find a way back into the game. And in the 87th minute here... We do get a good chance for that as Redmond somehow manages to beat Clichy to the ball. And then he, Ronaldo chops inside and he gets onto his stronger foot, passes it into Bigger Romana. And then on the rebound, I thought that that was going to be it. I thought we were going to get the equaliser late on in the match. But unfortunately, the defender, I think that was Vincent Company there, he did block it off very, very well. And unfortunately for us, we do go ahead and pick up a 1-0 loss. I play a lot worse when it is raining and in this match I played pretty terribly. Didn't have my shooting boots on and you can see there only 39% possession. Couldn't keep hold of the ball whatsoever because it's very, very hard to do that. Especially when it is raining, you know, it's hard enough trying to keep hold of the ball against the legendary AI. But when you do chuck a bit of rain or snow in there, it's even harder. The ball just slips about and you just can't get a good bit of tempo going to try and create a chance and maybe score from it. And that is a shame. And after that match, as you do usually get after losing a match, you know, by a small margin, you get a few players that haven't played a couple of matches or they haven't played in a couple of matches. And Tyler Blackett there complaining that he wants a transfer request. And it's the same with Saido Berahino. Even though I played him in the last match, he's saying that he wants to leave the club. It, just, it really doesn't make any sense, you know. Maybe it's because I've got a lot of players tied down as crucial first team player. And now they're not crucial first team players. It's a bit like Tyler Blackett. He was a crucial first team player. But he's no longer one. We've got better centre-backs now. We've got John Anthony Brooks. We've got Milo Savic. And we've also got Lascelles as well. So really, he's just gone down the pecking order so much now. And he really hasn't grown how I would have liked him to grow. So maybe if I do get a suitable offer for him, then I may think about selling him. But we do go into this match here against Norwich City in the Capital One Cup quarter-final. So we've actually done pretty well in this tournament so far. And I was hoping this could be a good chance for us to get our first bit of silverware. And we do get a good chance here as Lewis Cook tries to go for a shot there. And somehow it rebounds there to Gail Biggeramana who pokes it into the back of the net. Don't know why the goalkeeper John Ruddy came out there. But nevertheless it was a very nice goal there. Well it's not a nice goal whatsoever. I don't know what I'm talking about. 
Gelbig Romana gets her header in after a horrible deflection. And those weren't the only deflections that we were seeing in the match. I mean, in the first couple of chances that Norwich did get, they were getting a couple of deflections on goal. And then following that, we would actually get a counter-attack going. And it was Maxwell Corner getting played through there by Morpé, I believe it was. And unfortunately, we couldn't actually put it into the back of the net and double our lead. And we were made to pay for it on the half-time mark there. As Jacob Murphy, one of the Murphy twins, does head it into the back of the net. And levels up the scoring here. So a little bit of a shame that he actually managed to put it into the back of the net. Don't know where Christie was. He really should have been defending that right back spot. And if he was actually in position, that goal probably wouldn't have gone in. And, well, put momentum in their favour here. As our ex-player James Forrest tries to cut it inside to their player there but it's a really heroic block there by Milo Savic and that meant that we would go into extra time here so very very disappointing really because that goal could have easily been prevented and we wouldn't have had to go into extra time in the first place although I do have to say Norwich they dominated possession they had a few more shots on goal and they were unlucky at times not to score from them but we would get a chance there as Dele Ali goes for a shot and unfortunately we couldn't quite get to the rebound once again struggling to get on to the end of that rebound and that does mean that at the end of extra time we are going to be going into a penalty shootout so really not the ideal situation when we could have actually just come away with a 1-0 result or maybe even a 2-0 result had we not conceded that goal this match might have actually gone completely different and instead we are going into a penalty shootout and we convert our first penalty there very nicely with nil more pay and that is exactly what I want to be seeing converting our first penalty and then it was Norwich getting a chance and we managed to save it there and put us in an advantage in this penalty shootout as we go for a chip shot here and it went absolutely terribly wrong and uh, well that was just terrible I don't know what I was thinking of there and Norwich would have a chance to maybe get back into this penalty shootout as they go for a well I don't know what they were going for there probably trying to go down the middle a bit of a stutter shot there and twice it hasn't worked out for them but it would be Jordan I trying to get another goal and we would actually score from that penalty so we are 2-0 up now and if they miss this one they are under immense pressure and they end up missing it it's a Jude Afoe that actually hits the crossbar there and it's Hong Chul who has an opportunity to win the penalty shootout and we end up winning it 3-0. Bit of a weird penalty shootout. You don't usually see the AI, even the legendary AI, missing all of those chances on goal. That was pretty ridiculous to see that happen. And in the end, we actually win the penalty shootout by three goals to nil. I'm happy we won it because really... During the full time, well, during the 90 minutes of the match, the full 90 minutes, I believe that we actually should have won the match anyway. Just a little silly goal that Norwich got, and that really did, well, shift the momentum for the rest of the match and into extra time. But luckily, we do go through, and that means that we will be playing Stoke City in the semi final. So, really, looking at the other teams there, we've got, I think it was Liverpool or maybe it's Newcastle, and then we've got one of either teams which I didn't actually have a look at. But we really do have a good chance, actually, to go through in the Capital One Cup. And then after that match, we have like a spamming of emails here. Loads of players that want to leave in the next transfer window. Some of them understandable, like Remy Bacar, but then we've got other players that are just moaning for no reason whatsoever. They're getting enough game time. And again, it's Tyler Blackett. Three emails in the past three days. And this time he was complaining about a new contract that I'd offered him. I just don't understand why players complain so much. Like, he was fine in the first two seasons that I've had him. And now all of a sudden, now that he's actually not in the team as much as he would like... He's just moaning all the time and it really is frustrating. Fair enough he declined the contract. Probably didn't give him what he wanted but I really do expect the players to actually have some sort of dignity and stop complaining all the time. But we will go into a match here, the third and final match anyway and it would actually be against Everton here in the Premier League and it was going to be a very, very even match to be honest. Not too many chances going either way but when the chances did come along we really should have done better and so should Everton. They really should have tucked away their chances, as should we. And we get a really good chance here. There's Neil Morpay finding Jordan Ibe in acres of space there with a brilliant through ball. But again, denied by Joel Robles many a times in this game. Not just that one time, but many times in the game. And then we would see here that Besic passes it to Lundstram, who would then find Lukaku down this left-hand side, who would then find a ball into the middle. And really, if that was Lukaku in the middle and Lundstram on the wing, 
I think that Lukaku would have tucked that one away. That was a terrible shot on goal. And they really should have made it 1-0 there. Really, really poor effort from them. And we would get one final chance in the game here. 90 minutes plus three of added time. And it's nil more pay. Just utilising his pace late on in the game. And surely we will now be able to get something. But no, we are denied once again by the goalkeeper and Joel Robles in this game. He was playing absolutely insane. And in the end, we pick up a little bit of a disappointing 0-0 result. Not really the best time we're having in the Premier League as of the past couple of episodes. We lost to Manchester City in the first game. And getting a draw here against Everton, I think it's fair to say that I was pretty disappointed with that result. Considering the chances we had on goal, I really felt we should have done a lot better than we actually did do in the game. But a draw is a draw, and we do pick up a point nonetheless. So that's going to help us in our aim to finish mid-table this season, or maybe even in the Europa League spots. But this is going to be the end of the episode, guys. Hopefully you have enjoyed. And if you have enjoyed this episode of Career Mode, please be sure to leave a like on the video and subscribe if you haven't already. I do have a new series coming out in the next couple of days, so be on the lookout for that, guys. Hopefully you will enjoy that. But other than that, guys, I'm going to have to leave it there, and I'll see you next time for another video. Thanks for watching.